If you've ever had to build a Spring Boot application into a Docker image, you're probably aware of the Docker file. It's a series of instructions of how to build up your image. And to create one, you really need to understand the base image you're going to use, as well as the instructions available like copy, command and entry point, and also some best practices. Now, while it's completely achievable to build your application using a Docker file like this, it's personally not something I want to have to think about when I'm building a Spring Boot application. Thankfully, there are a couple of tools available. One is Jib by Google, and the other is the Spring Boot Maven or Gradle plugin that you're probably already using to build your Spring Boot jar file. And with these tools, we no longer need to have a Docker file. And if you want to learn how to set that up, then that's what we're going to explore in this video with a real life example. So let's get right into it. So aside from what I just mentioned, when we're building a Docker image using a Docker file, we also have to consider security, maintenance and performance. And when I say performance, I mean, for example, when we change the jar file, the Docker image has to be recreated, which eats up storage space and wastes time. So there's a lot to think about here, and even the most conscientious developer will have a hard time keeping up with it all. But there's more as well, because ideally your application's Docker image will be generated in a continuous integration CI environment, as opposed to on a developer's laptop. This environment should be controlled and audited, so you've got full visibility on what's happening, which is important since the built image will end up in production. CI servers and Dockers aren't always compatible. Remember that to build an image using Docker, whatever is issuing the commands needs access to the Docker daemon. When a CI server is itself running inside a Docker container, it may not have the required privilege to access the Docker daemon. For example, if you're running Jenkins inside AWS's serverless Fargate service, there's no access to the Docker daemon running on the host so you won't be able to build a Docker image using that. Obviously this causes a problem, but as you'll learn shortly, we do have some viable workarounds. Just like the taste of an aged whiskey, Docker images consist of multiple layers. In fact, Docker file instructions like copy add a new layer which is cached locally on your hard drive. This helps enormously with build performance since when you change a line in your Docker file, only that and following layers need to be regenerated. Consider this Docker file. It uses the open JDK base image and simply copies a jar file from the Docker context on top of it. This is how the image built from the Docker file looks in terms of its layers. And we can also see the layers being created during the build process itself. The next time the image is built, the output indicates that the previous cached layer has been used instead of copying the jar file again. All this is designed to make building images as fast as possible. So what's the problem then? Well, in this example, you can see that the jar file itself constitutes an entire layer. That's fine for small jar files, but some applications produce jar files over 100 megabytes in size. This causes a couple of problems. First, every time the jar file changes, like when you change your application code or update a dependency, the entire layer has to be created. Each time that happens, that's another 100 megabytes of disk space used up. Secondly, there are lots of files inside the jar file that change infrequently. Copying all this data around slows down the build process. It would be better if the jar file contents itself consisted of multiple layers. That way, when one layer changed, not all the other layers would have to be rebuilt. Well, fortunately, someone over at Spring Boot HQ already thought of that. Since Spring Boot 2.3, the generated fat jar file includes details of the different layers. A layers.idx file is included, defining the layers and their associated files and directories. So in this case, we have four layers dependencies, the Spring Boot loader, snapshot dependencies, and actual application code. And they're ordered from those that change least to most frequently. So here it's been assumed that your application code is the layer that changes most frequently, which I think is fair enough, but it can all be customized if needed. So what, how does this jar file layering actually help? Well, Spring also supports an option 
to extract a fat jar file based on its layers. So given the previous layers.idx file, we end up with four directories, dependencies, Spring Boot loader, snapshot dependencies, and application. These directories would be quite useful to extract and add to a Docker image, don't you think? If that were done, we'd end up with multiple layers in our image and changes to our application would result in streamlined image rebuilds. Let's jump into how Jib and Spring Boot can manage that for us. And by the way, since we'll be using Gradle in this video, you might find two courses I have available useful. If you're just learning Gradle, then check out my introductory course, Get Going With Gradle. It's completely free. And if you want to master building Java projects with Gradle, then check out my recently released course, Gradle Hero. And you can find out more at learn.tomgregory.com. Back to the video. Jib is a tool specifically designed to generate Docker images from a jar file. Importantly, it creates a layered Docker image for you, saving on both time and disk storage. Plugins are available to run Jib within Gradle and Maven Java build tools. Let's look at an example using Gradle by taking the infamous Spring Boot API example project and getting it running inside a Docker image built by Jib. Apply the Jib Gradle plugin in a project's build.gradle file like this. Apply the following configuration. Since the project uses Java 17, we have to specify a base image other than the default Java 11. Based on a recent pull request I've seen, I expect future Jib releases to set the correct image version automatically. And we also need the Jib.2 image, which is mandatory. We could set it to project.name, but in this case, we'll pick a unique name to distinguish it from other images we'll build later. Given this configuration, we can execute the jib docker build task, which builds the image using the local docker daemon. We can see the images available when we run docker images. Awesome, let's go ahead and run the image as a container to make sure it's working. And the output shows the application has started up within the container, cool. One of Jib's advantages is that it doesn't require Docker to build Docker images. How is that possible? Well, the clever folk at Google have replicated the Docker image build mechanism, which consists of generating the correct tables and configuration files. The distinct advantage of not using Docker is that it becomes possible to build images in environments where it's not possible to install Docker, such as continuous integration service, as mentioned earlier. Jib lets you build the image in two ways when you're not using Docker. First, you can create a local tar file, which you can later load into Docker using the docker load command. Secondly, you can deploy an image to a remote Docker registry like GCR, ECR, or Docker Hub. Since the second option is the most common in a CI environment, let's explore how it works with the Jib Gradle task to push an image to AWS's Elastic Container Registry, ECR. First though, we need to add some configuration to set up the connection with a remote Docker registry. So I've changed the jib.2.image property, which now includes a prefix of the ECR registry details. And the credentials are set based on Gradle properties, which I have located in my gradle.properties file. And you can check out some other authentication mechanisms in the documentation I've linked in the description. Now we're ready to run the Gradle Jib task to build and push the image. In my case, from the AWS console, I can now see the image is available. Jib doesn't give much output during image build to prove the layering is working, but we can check it using the Docker history command. First though, we need to pull the Docker image so it's available to our Docker daemon. We can clearly see here that we have classes and dependencies layers but this doesn't respect what's been defined in the layers.idx, but instead, Jib uses its own approach to layering. The second way to build Docker images uses the Spring Boot Gradle plugin. Yes, that's the same plugin developers use to generate the fat jar using boot jar and run the application using the boot run task. The plugin uses a technology called Cloud Native Build Packs, CNB which is an abstraction on top of the Docker file, providing a best practice approach to building Docker images. Note that to use CNB though, we need access to a local Docker daemon, which might be problematic in some CI environments. No additional configuration is required to build the image, 
as the plugin by default uses the project's name and version for the image name. So we just need to run the boot build image Gradle task. Let's double check the image using Docker images. And once again, we can successfully run a container from that image. This plugin can also push an image to your Docker registry of choice. Let's set it up to publish to my private AWS ECR registry again. We set the image name to include details of the registry where we're publishing to. We set the publish option to true, and we provide a username and password to authenticate with the registry. And once again, these are properties set in my gradle.properties file. With this in place, we run the boot build image task again, passing a dash dash publish image. Checking the AWS console verifies that the image has been successfully published. This time during the build process, we get some helpful output in the console. We can clearly see the layers defined within the layers.idx file. What's more, we can see the effect of a change to our application. For example, if I change one of the dependency versions in build.gradle, when we build the image again, we get this output, which reflects changes to the dependencies layer and the application layer, which got recompiled. However, if I make a change to the application source code, when I rebuild the image, we see this output, which shows that only the application layer gets updated. Nice. So in summary, I think it's fair to say we no longer need to maintain a Docker file with our Spring Boot application, thanks to Jib and the Spring Boot Gradle plugin. Now, which one of these you choose does depend on your particular situation. So check out the side-by-side -side comparison in the article, which I'll link from the description. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in a video very soon.